Good evening. Conservation Minister Philip Wollaston is quitting politics at the election. He says he's leaving for personal and not political reasons. Here's political reporter Richard Harmon. Mr Wollaston's been Nelson MP for nine years. Earlier this year he was appointed Conservation and Local Government Minister. All through his political career, he's been a close political ally of former Prime Minister Geoffrey Palmer. He led the lobbying for Mr Palmer during Mike Moore's challenge, but he denies he's leaving because of the way that turned out. Uh, I didn't seek advice uh, from any of my colleagues or from Geoffrey Palmer. Uh, I felt that it was a decision I had to make. I made it, and then before I announced it, I told a number of people who had a right to be told first. Would you have stayed, though, if Geoffrey Palmer was still the leader? Uh, I would have been in a more difficult position because, as I said, he had talked me out of standing down uh, and uh, I had given him a personal undertaking, which uh, I'm now relieved of, uh, which would have been difficult to break, but I would have been, I think, under a lot of stress. We talked and he's, um, he's made a decision for himself and his family for a change. He's, in politics, you put your country and your electorate first and he's made a decision for himself and, and that's how it should be. The Labour Party certainly doesn't need this resignation even though this is a relatively safe seat. The fact that one of Geoffrey Palmer's closest political allies has chosen to resign suddenly on the eve of the election will do nothing to help Mike Moore. Richard Harmon, One Network News. Auckland police swooped on street gangs last night but their action has come in for criticism. Nearly 20 youngsters were picked up in the raid, which followed a spate of muggings, allegedly by children in American-style gangs. Kim Webby reports. Last night's purge targeted groups such as the Tongan Crip Gang, blamed for much of the street crime in central Auckland. Last night, the children were taken to the town hall, where they were handed over to social workers and Pacific Island and Māori representatives. The police used the new Children and Young Persons Act to justify the swoop. It allows them to remove children from detrimental situations. They don't necessarily have to be doing anything specific at the time they're actually picked up by the police. The, the act relates to the environment they're, they're actually in, away from their family. But last night's action is criticised by a lawyer who helped draft the Children and Young Persons Act. To use it as a, a vacuum cleaner for the so-called LA style gang members seems to me to be stretching the words of that particular section probably to breaking point. And while Pacific Island leaders were involved in the raid not everyone was entirely happy with it. Today a Tongan leader said he supported efforts to get the kids off the streets but he has reservations about the police approach last night which he describes as confrontational. And the youngsters involved were quick to show what they thought of the police action. Kim Webby, One Network News. Tensions rose in the Gulf today as both the United States and Iraq resorted to force. In the Gulf of Oman, US and Australian warships fired warning shots at an Iraqi tanker. While in occupied Kuwait City, Iraqi soldiers stormed into foreign embassies and hauled off several French citizens. Iraqi troops raided several Western diplomatic buildings in Kuwait City today, provoking a sharp international response. They forced their way into the French ambassador's residence some distance from the embassy and led away four French citizens, including a diplomat. Troops also broke into the Canadian ambassador's residence next door and the Belgian embassy, harassing and questioning diplomats. This marks an escalation of Iraqi pressure and today, several Western nations announced an escalation of their military response to the Gulf crisis. Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney denounced what he called Iraq's reprehensible acts. He announced he was sending a squadron of CF-18 fighter planes to join two warships in the Gulf. Britain committed the 7th Armoured Brigade, its famed Desert Rats. Iraq's evil aggression must be reversed. French President Mitterrand warned that his country would respond to what he called Iraq's flagrant violation of diplomatic immunity and ordered an emergency cabinet session tomorrow. And France has just announced it's sending more troops into the Gulf. Three regiments as well as tanks and anti-tank helicopters will be added to French forces already in the troubled area. Earlier President Bush said he'd support whatever action France took. President Bush condemned Iraq's seizure of French citizens as outrageous, a clear violation of international law. But White House officials say the president, typically prudent, has decided not to respond quickly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it uh, closer to a war situation. 
I still hope that this matter can be peacefully resolved. Does this incident require a response from the U.S.? No, I'm not rattling sabers. You're trying to get me to sound like I'm rattling sabers. Well, when I rattle a saber, the man will know it. The president did confirm a shooting incident at sea today in which U.S. and Australian ships fired across the bow of an Iraqi oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman after its captain refused to stop. But if it indeed is not carrying any... Uh, contrabrand or anything that will violate the sanctions it will be permitted to go on its way the joint boarding crew determined the tanker contained no prohibited cargo and allowed it to go on its way to iraq and from baghdad today new pictures of a new zealand hostage he's ian mills seen here with another hostage obviously aware of iraqi censorship both said they can't leave but they're being treated well but nothing but friendliness and help even the taxi driver today refused to take some money off me to get here which must be pretty unusual around the world i think sport now and auckland notched up another big tally in today's ranfurly shield challenge a tiger just couldn't match the efficiency of the blue and white Rick Salito reports with the strong wind at their backs, Auckland needed early points, but they got a little carried away. Tipped on by Kerwin, Terry Wright. Grant Fox's tally was ticking over faster than the price of oil. Another drop kick on, a left footer from Fox. Here's Fox again. And while Otago never gave up, their guts of glory approach cost them dearly. Paul Henderson doing his best to stay on, but a leg injury eventually forced him from the field. The good news for the selectors, though, is an x-ray showed its deep bruising with nothing broken. Otago could have done with a bit more good news today because Auckland certainly didn't give them any. And 39-0 at the break, probably enough points up at half-time, turning into the wind. Alex Wiley once said, if they can score that many points in one half, so can you. And while Otago certainly enjoyed the second half a bit more, this game had already been decided. Rick Salizzo, One Network News. And the final score, 45-9 to Auckland. Perhaps Otago plays a bit of luck with Lotto. Tonight's winning combo was 1, 10, 15, 30, 38 and 40, and the bonus number was 16. Now here's Jim with the latest on the weather. Well, it'll be cool and breezy tomorrow. A new high moves in from the west. Ahead of it, a strong southwesterly flow will cover the country. That'll bring a couple of fronts as well. So that's what we have tomorrow morning. The first front will leave showers in the north and west of the North Island. Behind it, a, a gradual clearance and a cool southwesterly change. In the afternoon, a second front moves up the east coast. It'll bring showers right up as far as uh, Gisborne by midnight. And that wind will ease back to a gentle southerly breeze. Temperature highs at your place tomorrow, the range 12 to 15. In the South Island, the cold weather that Invercargill had today spreads north. Gales will affect the southeast coast. Showers will fall on the east coast and also in the south. And fresh snow will fall to 200 metres in Invercargill, sorry, in uh, Fiordland, Southland and Otago. In the afternoon, the front goes. A few showers will linger about the south coast. The sun takes over. The southwesterly will ease. And frosts are on the way for tomorrow evening. Temperature highs tomorrow fall between 10 and 15. On to the metropolitan areas. An afternoon southerly for Auckland, the showers will go, the high around 15 degrees. Same high for Hamilton, again the southerly, but clear weather comes with it. Nice Sunday for Hastings and Napier, but after dusk, prepare for a sou'wester and showers. The southerly visits Wellington around noon and leaves afternoon showers. It dies out in Christchurch though, so do morning showers and it'll be a little nippy. Speaking of which, Dunedin's high is 11 tomorrow, a few showers too, once again that fresh sou'wester. Monday's looking good. Fine for most, but the Otago coast should catch a couple of showers. Thank you, Jim. That's the news, sport and weather for Saturday. Good night.